don't stray too far away from home. When I say that, I mean don't stray too far away from your brothers and sisters who also serve with you. I joined the Marine Corps in 1991. Went into the Marine Corps office, he asked me what did I want, and the way he asked me was in such a way, I was, it scared me. I was like, uh, I want some stickers. He goes, we don't give out stickers here. I go, okay, and I left. Got halfway down the hallway, I was like, that scared me. This is what I was looking for. You have what it takes to go back in there and confront this guy. I turned around and went back in there, and he goes, what do you want? I go, I want some information about the Marine Corps. He got up, fixed his belt, marched over to me, shook my hand, my knees buckled. It took everything I had in my 17-year-old body, 16-year-old body, however old was at the time, to stand straight and shake that man's hand without showing weakness. That was all it took. It was a handshake. The movie Full Metal Jacket, that was like the first time I saw a Marine drill instructor in a boot camp scenario. And it, granted, it was Hollywood, and it scares, it scares every parent of every kid who wants to join the Marine Corps, including my mom. My aunt was like, you want to go do that stuff? And I was like, it's a movie. Boot camp was great. It was exciting. It was what I wanted. It was a challenge I was looking for. I took the advice of Matt Sarlarini. He said, you're in the military. You volunteer for everything. They ask for volunteer, you jump up. You don't know what it's going to be. Volunteer anyway. It might be picking up trash. And volunteering got me to be a squad leader in boot camp, a guide in boot camp. It just kept me in a leadership position all the way through boot camp. Just off that advice of volunteering and just because I, mean, I wanted to be there and working hard. Guys from 2nd Recon Battalion show up. They explain what they did. Say we work behind enemy lines. We work a lot in the water. We jump out of airplanes. What we do is dangerous, which is why we ask for volunteers. Recon itself is very small in the Marine Corps. So when I had orders to, when I got, when I received orders to go to Fifth Force, I knew a couple of guys already there that I was going to be able to tune with. So when I showed up, they welcomed me on board and I started a whole new phase of training. My second deployment was 2003, right into Iraq. We boarded ship and then we got to Kuwait. And our job was to go into Umm Qasar and go up and then we were going to hit a, some significant targets along the way. First thing we were hitting was the, the UN facility right there, Umm Qasar. It had been overran. And, uh, and our, our job was go there and take it back. Next day we roll in and we start to cross and immediately we get, we get resistance right away. We crossed in with, with the infantry battalion. They were kind of leading the way. So as they were leading the way, we saw them just get barraged with mortars and, and rockets, you know, to where like for a second they disappeared. And I, I just see this huge cloud of smoke just engulf the entire formation. And I was like, wow, man, those guys are gone. And then you see them backing up out of it. And I'm like, whoo, goodness gracious. So that was our first introduction to battle, to fire from the enemy. Well, after Iraq 2003, I was selected to be a part of a special unit called Detachment 1. Colonel Robert Coates was tasked with uh, selecting, training, and, and equipping and, and deploying pretty much a 100-man force to Iraq in 2004. We deployed to Baghdad, Iraq. We worked specifically in Baghdad. We went and got this guy, really bad guy, and we and we need to be out of that neighborhood before the sun came up. We got him processed. As we we're going back, the vehicle that I was in starts smoking. When we stop right in the center of this town, bad town, if they see anything military, they're gonna shoot at it. And the sun was just starting to come up. And I know how I felt, and I know everybody felt the same way. We we do not need to stop here. Vehicle stop. We got out and contingency started. Hey, rig for tow. Boom, start latching on, start rigging it. While that was happening, trust me, everybody had their guns pointing to every opening for every building, every shop along that street on both sides. We were sitting ducks for about two to three minutes max. That's enough time to wipe out a whole squad. So when we got back, we had a Marine who who was getting out of the Marine Corps. And he went in and, you know, for his questioning, for, you know, PTSD, they found out that he was, he was having some problem. I was his boss at the time and I found out and, and said, you know, what's going on? And it, apparently this had been going on for a while and I didn't know about it. And he was struggling with sleeping and, and he was having memories of, of Afghanistan and some of the things he had did. And he was having a hard time dealing with it and he didn't share and no one knew. He felt like he didn't belong here anymore. He said, I used to feel like family doesn't. 
and he started explaining to me like all like how he felt. So I took those things he said and I said, okay, what can I, what can I control? I want him to wake up and be excited by coming, coming in. I asked him, I said, can I get your permission to tell the guys what's going on? And we want to be here for you. We want to help you. This is your family. We're your unit. We're here for you. We always have been. I told the guys what was going on. They were like, okay, well, what do we need to do? We got him back in the fold. Guys would invite him to dinner at their house every other night. Guys would just, just switch off, hanging out with him like every, every night of the week. He got better. He got better. He's doing great. And the thing is, you know, we didn't know. We didn't, we didn't know he was going through that. People ask me all the time, you know, and it's like, wow, 22 years? And you, you, don't, you don't have any, I'm like, any what? What, PTSD or whatever? It's like, I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe this is what keeps me in check. Maybe football. Maybe volunteering my services to my community. I volunteer a lot, but I volunteer because I see a need, I see a gap. And I, I'm trying to fill that gap. I'm trying to be a part of something. I was a part of something in the military, and now I'm not a part of that. So I know I need to belong to something. I know that for me. And I think if I didn't have that, I'd probably have problems. My transition has been great because of my community. Because I know, no, a lot of veterans don't, don't get that. Sadly, they go off. They go where they think they need to go. They need to support their families. They need to feed their families. They've been part of this big machine and they gets, and then they're gone. And they're trying to figure it out, trying to figure out here. It's not easy. Find a home. That's it. I think it's that simple. Find a home, you know, and embrace it and be a part of it. Don't stand with your hands out, waiting for someone to give you something. You have to continue to be a giver. Give yourself of others and you will find a home. To be included in this project is an honor. This is not something I, I ever thought I would be doing or, or talking about. Just to be recognized as a veteran in the United States is, is an honor within itself. The way people talk to you, thank you for your service. I always say my pleasure, you know, I mean it. No matter how young, how old the veterans are, there's a, there's a connection. Obviously, you know, you're leaving the military for a reason. There's something else that you want to pursue or you just kind of just kind of hit your limit. The world is huge, but you got to find that thing that really makes you happy. And that's what you go after. Go after what your heart wants. It might be asking you to be a teacher. Go do that. You have the skills, you have the know-how, and you definitely are not afraid of working hard. Get a network of veterans. Don't stray too far away from home. When I say that, I mean don't stray too far away from your brothers and sisters who also served with you.